Hey guys, it's Doug Giles again with Creative Restorations, and we have got another pool table video for you. Now, you got to forgive the audio because we are on location uh, at a bar down in New Orleans, and we are going to be recovering this pool table, which is a 4x8 Cooper coin-operated table. Now, if you're one of the guys that has a Valley or a Dynamo or pretty much any other coin-operated table, the procedure is identical. So it doesn't really matter unless you've got a three-piece slate, older Brunswick three-piece slate coin-operated table, or maybe a Gandhi three-piece slate coin-operated table from back in the 50s or 60s, you know, Brunswick or Gandhi. This procedure on this table is going to be identical. doesn't matter whether it's U.S. Billiards, United Billiards, Cooper, Valley, Dynamo, doesn't matter. Procedure's all the same. So without further ado, let's get into recovering this table. All right, so before we really get started with the uh, with the voiceover portion of this video, you guys have to excuse me. My, uh, my voice may be a bit off uh, and forgive the possible occasional cough, throat clear, sniffle, or sneeze. Uh, I am apparently suffering from a bit of an allergic reaction to cutting some cedar. Now, if any of you guys uh, are not familiar with this, uh, some people can have severe allergic reactions to different species of wood. Uh, I've had this issue before when dealing with mahogany. Uh, I've never had it with, uh, with cedar before, but uh, you know, we all, our body chemistry changes as we get older. Uh, and if you don't have, if, if, if you've never heard of this happening, actually I was talking with uh, Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. And if you're not familiar with Steve's channel, I'll leave the link down below. He's a cobbler. He does a lot of uh, shoe repair videos. Um, but uh, I was talking with Steve this morning and he was absolutely blown away by the fact that, yeah, people get uh, allergies to wood. Um, and uh, for, for a really good example of a severe allergic reaction, look up Coca Bolo, aller allergic reactions to Coca Bolo. So uh, again, excuse me if, uh, if, if I have to clear my throat or cough or sneeze or something. I'm going to try to do this all in one take, but never know. All right, so let's get going. All right, first thing I've got to do is go in and uh, use a number three Phillips, or I'm sorry, a number two Phillips and go around and remove all the trim pieces from around the side of the table without dropping all of the, the screws. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Usually there's four, either three or four, depending on whether you're talking about the side or you're talking about an end. And then the trim piece just, uh, usually it'll slide into the corner cap, or the, the corner miter uh, on one side and come out of the opposite side, but sometimes you have to bow it out in order to get it to work its way free. And then I switch up to a 3 8 inch uh, nut setter on an impact and go around and start taking the rail bolts out. And again, I mean, this is, this is pretty easy. Nothing spectacular. Just go around, do the entire table, catch all the bolts. Yeah, there's probably going to be some dead areas of this video as well where I'm really not going to be talking. You just get to sit back and watch what it is I'm doing. Uh, I, I didn't show, you know, the entire process on like all six rails. I showed four of them instead of six. So anyway, my next my next step is I go around and I gather up all the rails put them all in one location, try to clear off the top of the table as much as possible. And then I have a set of treated four by fours with a one by two on mounted on top and some pool table cloth on the bottom of that four by four. And I use that to jack up the slate. So you pull up one side, put a board under, pull up the other side, put a board under. And then once we've got that, we're at, I personally like to do the rails as the next step. Uh, some people like to cover the bed first and then come back and cover the rails. I do the rails first 
And the reason why I do that is because, uh, you know, when you're stripping the rails and everything, you're getting a lot of dust. There might be some dust in the in trapped under the cloth of the rails. And, you know, there might be some dirt and everything. You really don't want that on the uh, on that fresh cloth on the bed. So I'll do the rails first, go in, strip them. And apparently the last guy that did these rails actually glued most of the backside of them. I don't glue, I use staples. And I'm getting ready to show you something here on this rail that I'm doing. So as soon as I finish pulling the staples on this, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, if you notice, there's a fold right there. Now this is a coin operated table and you should never have folds on your side pockets. On the rails, the, the side pocket end of the rails, you should not have folds ever. There is a correct way of doing this to where you don't end up with any folds. So once we've got all the staples pulled out of the, out of the rails, I'll go back in and like I said, this one was glued down. So we take the old cloth off by just pulling it away, pulling it away from the rail. And then once all six of them are done, we go back and we check the rail facings. And like with this one, we had a few of them that were coming off and David's there. He's using some of that uh, 3M uh, 90 high tech spray adhesive. And you just do both sides. And for, you know, for a, for an older table like this, where the customer doesn't really want to spend an awful lot of money and replace the rubber on it, and you know, replace the rail facings, uh, this is this is kind of a get by method. It will hold up just fine until the next time we go to recover the table. Uh, in which case we may end up doing it a, a second time, the exact same thing. But eventually the customer is going to have to get the rubber replaced. And at that point, we'll, you know, we'll put on new rail facings as well and do it all proper with good barge glue. Now, by the way, I'm going to leave links down below, all the Amazon links to all of the tools that you see me using in this video. Um, over the last 30 years, I think I've gotten it down to a pretty good science and, and picked out all of the best tools to do this job and do it well and do it fast. So once the glue tacks up on there, you know, David's just going to go ahead and press them into spot into place, making sure to keep the, the proper ones together. Now, once I've got, uh, once I've got all the rails stripped and repaired, any minor repairs, I'll go in, I'll take my rail cloth out of the bag for the with, with with the cloth and in this instance the customer chose a brown cloth not exactly my my first choice in color cloths uh, cloth colors uh, but this is what he wanted and this was what we gave him uh, it was available uh, it, it's an oddball color uh, but I tell you it actually came out pretty decent it came out better looking than what I expected it to but it came out good now, again, to keep that bed cloth nice and clean, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the bag. Double check to make sure I didn't leave anything in there. Usually they give me spots along with the chalk. This time they gave me chalk. They didn't give me spots, which is rare for championship, but it happens. And I always carry spares anyway. So to keep that cloth clean, put it back in the bag and set the bag with the with that bag cloth off to the side while we do the rails. Now, if you notice, uh, I went ahead and spread down a moving blanket over the top of the table. And again, I haven't stripped the uh, bed cloth off of the table yet, so that original cloth is still underneath that moving blanket and on the, you know, attached to the slate. But the moving blanket gives me a much cleaner work surface than the existing cloth. So I'd rather work on the moving blanket. And I start by laying out all of my uh, rail material, stacking them on top of each other. Again, I try to work kind of assembly line, do one job fully before I move on to the next. Now, 
one thing you want to do is you want to look to see which side is the face. And if you see right there, they, they always put a sticker on the side that is that goes outward. So we're going to flip that over. Okay, and that's going to, the face, the side that's marked face is going to be downward. Now, one thing you want to do too is you want to offset your rail. You don't want to put it directly in the center. You want to offset it slightly. Fold your end over and put two tacks in. Then you're going to take and spin your rail around. And you're going to grab onto the end and stretch back. And then fold that end over. And then hold it with your index finger and pop two staples in. Now you've just stretched the cloth on the rail from end to end. Cut off the excess because you don't need all that excess cloth on there. It just gets in the way. And then what I'm going to do is the bottom of the rail, which is going to be the flat side, I'm going to pop one staple in right in the middle, flip the rail over again. Again, go to the middle, tighten it up, put one staple, go to the end, put one staple, go to the opposite end, move the material out of the way and then pop one more staple and let's see we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing go to the other end and you're gonna pop one more staple in and then on that end the top side on the back you go around and you just pop you know lay in a whole row of staples they should be about an inch inch and a half to two inches apart inch and a half is good and then you flip it over and on the bottom side of the rail, you're going to pull and tighten up your cloth. Again, always working from the middle of the rail towards the ends. And you're going to stop. Doesn't matter whether you're talking about the top of the rail or the bottom of the rail, you're always going to stop about five inches from the end. Now, you see, I, I take my razor and I go right up in the corner where the end of the rail is, that corner of the rail, and I'm gonna cut the cloth straight down. Kind of looks like an elephant. You got the trunk in the middle, the two eyes are your staples, and you got your two ears. And then we're gonna take and cut that trunk off. Then we take our, our rails, our, our cloth. We're gonna fold the cloth and roll it in our fingers keeping that corner nice and clean pop two staples behind it and then come back and start working out any any wrinkles that may be in it shouldn't have many if any then we're going to move the cloth we're going to take that side push it off to the side and then we're going to work on the other side the bottom and again same thing we're going to fold it and then roll the cloth in our fingers pop two staples in and then start tightening up the cloth on the bottom again same thing go in the corner slice down go in the opposite corner slice down elephant cut off its trunk fold roll it in your fingers and pull taut and then pop two staples in the back And then this is the bottom side, so you know you just pull pull on the bottom side, remove the face sticker, pop your staples in, move that out of the way, do your opposite side, fold the cloth, roll it over, pop a couple of staples in the back, and start working your cloth down. Now I'm going to show you this again. We're going to do this a second time. It's going to be a bit closer. And in this portion of the video, you may want to go back and watch this, you know, three, four, five times to see exactly what my technique is here. Again, bottom side. We're going to put the face side down. We're going to offset the rail by about a half an inch towards the bottom of the rail. So you want the bottom of the rail closer to the edge of the cloth. We're going to pop in two staples. 
And then we have all that excess. We can actually cut, cut some of that excess off before we stretch. And then we're gonna spin the rail around. With your right hand, grab the cloth, left hand, pull back, and then fold it over. Hold it with your thumb or your, your index finger and pop in two staples. Put one staple in the middle of the rail on the bottom. Flip it over. On the back side of the top, you're gonna fold it over, tighten, it, tighten up your cloth, go about four inches from the end, put, it, put in a staple, go to the opposite end about four inches from the end, put another staple and then run a bead of staples about an inch and a half apart across the back of the rail on the top. Spin it around again. And this time now you're working on the bottom of the rail and you're gonna pull, tighten up your cloth and pop a staple. Again, about an inch and a half apart. Again, we stop about four to five inches from the end of the rail. Now, usually I'll put the, I'll rest the, the one end of the rail in my, right in my crotch and lean up against the table, kind of securing it. Go in that corner. Find the corner, cut straight down. the cut. Now it looks like you got an elephant. There's his ears and there's his trunk right in the middle and we're going to cut the trunk off. So we're going to take and fold straight down right at that corner. We're going to roll the cloth in our fingers just like that and then we're going to lay it, lay it down to where it's slightly below the end of the, the rail. You don't want your folds to protrude past the end of the rail. And then finish up by putting your, your staples in the back. Load up more staples if necessary. And finish it off. Then we're going to move that side out of the way. So we don't end up stapling it underneath the, cloth, the, the side that we're getting ready to work on. We'll fold it down right at that corner. Roll it down with your fingers and then pull it around to the back. Pop two staples in. And now we're going to work on the bottom of the rail. And again, no wrinkles whatsoever, no folds. So let's show you that one more time on the opposite end of the rail. Find your corner, cut straight down. Find your other corner, cut straight down. There's your elephant ears, pull them back, cut off the elephant's trunk. Flop your ears back over. Pinch it right in the corner. Roll it with your fingers and pull it around. Put two staples in the back. Now this time we're gonna work on the bottom of the rail. Fold that cloth back out of the way to the opposite side. Pinch it right in the corner, roll it around. Roll it in your fingers, roll, roll it down in your fingers, and then hold it nice and secure, and pop two staples in, and then finish up pulling your cloth the rest of the way down towards the center of the rail. For trimming, all you do is just come back and, and trim off the excess. And you really don't have to do too much trimming with it. All you really need to do is get that bulk of material from the ends 
and uh, in the in the center of it, uh, more towards the center of the rail, you just need to cut away uh, for your rail bolt holes. Same thing on the opposite end. We're gonna flip it over. Gonna trim it up at the end. And this time we'll let it come come towards the bottom of the rail and then use the bottom of the rail as a guide for our razor and just cut straight down until we get to the other end and just uh, all we want to do is leave leave that section of the cloth where the where we pop the two staples in the back and there you go that's a completed rail no wrinkles everything is good and tight it's stretched in, in every direction. And when we put it on the rail, our, all of our, any excess that we have is gonna be uh, behind the rail. It will never be seen. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a perfect install of the cloth. Now I'll show you this one. I'm gonna shut up here for a minute and we'll show you this in real time. There you go. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, it's not difficult to do these. <clears throat> it's not difficult to do these pool tables uh, or to do the rails specifically. Uh, it does take a bit of practice. It does take a bit of uh, finesse. Um, you know, not pulling the cloth too much uh, so that you end up with dimples in the rails. You don't want to end up with that. Um, but it really isn't that, that hard to do. And believe it or not, I've actually slowed down over the years. Uh, my, my real time, I used to be able to, at one point in time, completely cover, uh, recover an entire set 
actually do the upholstery. I couldn't really strip the rails at the as well in this amount of time, but uh, I could recover an entire set of rails in 15 minutes. And I've gotten slower over the years. I guess that happens with all of us. And again, that close-up that I did of uh, doing the doing the rails, it's a good idea for you to go back and, and re-watch that. Maybe slow down the, uh, even if you need to, slow down your playback speed on here down to maybe 50% or 25% so you really get an idea as to what it is I'm doing here. I'm not exactly the best person at uh, articulating my thoughts and putting it down into words and uh, unless I'm sitting at a computer screen and I'm able to write out a script which I'm not doing on this you know and sometimes just watching it will actually you know watching it a few times in slow motion will tell you more than what I can for me it's second nature I've just I've been doing this for almost 30 years now and you know recovering a set of rails is almost second nature and and there's little things that I do that I'm I'm quite sure that I'm I'm not even aware that I'm doing while I'm while I'm busy recovering these these tables you know so it's entirely possible I miss some really significant things that I should be telling you but my mind just doesn't pick up on it because it's pretty much second nature it's almost like walking how do you explain to somebody how to walk so once we got all the rails done we go ahead we clear off pretty much the top of the table put all of our our uh, scrap material from the rails and in, in the center all of our old cloth from the rails in the center of the table uh, we actually this is kind of funny uh, the customer, our customer there had just laid down new uh, tile on the floor and if you look at the floor there you can see there's a lot of glue squeeze out from when they did the floor uh, and wasn't all that fun that was still fresh glue and uh, I had glue stuck to my shoes uh, I actually still do have glue stuck to my shoes I have to wait for that glue to dry so I can pry it off of the soles of my shoes uh, but anyway, some of that glue had gotten onto my uh, compressor hose that David had to go back and clean that glue off of the hose. It's still a little tacky, but uh, whatever. I mean, it's just part of the job, I guess. So we go around and, and cut the cloth off, uh, make our slits in between the pockets, and rip the cloth straight down. Makes it easy to go around and, and you know clean off the top of the table get all the old cloth off it's the fastest way I know of to do it and I always cut that cloth leave in the center that way I can throw everything right in the center and then and then roll it up once everything is done, just roll all that cloth up. Now you can see uh, it's it's probably been at least four or five years since this table had been recovered, and it gets used a lot. It may have even been longer than that. And the amount of hand powder, that white cone powder that uh, you see in the bars and pool halls and stuff, all that migrates through your cloth and it ends up as exactly what you see on the screen right here. Just tons and tons and tons of dust. But we go back in and we clean it all up. We'll, we'll sweep everything to the center and you know get all that old dust off of there. Sweep it off a couple of times and then I'll actually take a damp rag and come back and actually wipe down the entire surface with a damp rag. I mean, it's not clean enough to eat off of, but uh, it's plenty, plenty clean enough to uh, to get the next uh, 
well, to get the cloth to stick down, uh, the glue to stick for your cloth. Um, it's a whole lot cleaner than what it was. But apparently somebody had spilled a drink on this table and it discolored the slate there. And yeah. But again, you know, this is, uh, this is the joys of doing bar room pool tables, bar boxes. So this is a pretty damp rag that I'm using. I really wanted to get as much of that, that powder off of there. Probably could have just followed that up with a dry rag, but I just decided to let it dry naturally. Um, and in, in a second here, we're gonna we're gonna speed up so that uh, you know we can watch the the drying process on the slate. We can watch slate dry. Almost as interesting as watching paint dry, huh? Well, we'll come back in in a minute. We actually will use the cloth, the bed cloth, as a fan. So we'll take out the bed cloth, lay it all out, grab our two ends, and just, you know, wave it back and forth for a couple of minutes, and then the slate dries out pretty, pretty quickly. So what we'll do now is we'll line up one edge of the cloth with the bottom edge of the side of the table. And then the other side, we're gonna let it overhang. So our right side there, we're actually, we're lining up the edge of the cloth with the bottom edge of the, the slate, and then we're gonna fold it back. We're gonna fold the cloth straight back. Now what I like to do is I'll use a piece of cardboard and always test your glue to make sure, and you'll see in a little bit here, why you always want to test your glue can before you just start spraying over the cloth. So we'll start at the middle, and we're gonna put a good heavy coat of glue, two to three passes, quick passes of glue. And again, this is the 3M90, Spray 90. And you, do you see the spray pattern? Uh, a lot of guys will use the 3M77. I don't like the 3M77 because it comes out almost like hairspray does, and it gets everywhere. This Spray 90, it comes out in a straight fan pattern, just like you see here. Very, very clean to work with, very accurate with where you, where you want it to go. It doesn't get a whole bunch of overspray everywhere. It's just really, really good glue to work with. I used to use the 3M Super 74 or Foam Fast 74. Uh, Foam Fast 74 has gotten astronomically expensive compared to what it used to be. Uh, 74, I used to be able to buy it for about eight to nine dollars a can. That stuff is upwards of forty dollars a can nowadays. Uh, why it's so expensive, I have no idea. But anyway, they. Uh, switched up their formula, I guess, and introduced the 90, which works very well uh, also for upholstery. Uh, so anyway, I'll take my cardboard and, you know, try to help to, to dry, the, dry out the glue a little bit, make it tack up. And this is basically a sprayable contact cement that works very well for upholstery. Now I'm going to carefully roll the cloth straight back. We don't want to pull the cloth. We just want to roll it straight back. Go over it lightly with your hand at first and then progressively start working it down harder and harder, being more firm with your hand, uh, setting the glue, the two glues together. And that's going to create that bond. I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm actually impressing pretty hard. Now, on the opposite side, we're going to take a Sharpie. It doesn't matter what color, as long as it's one you can see on the cloth. We're going to go underneath the cloth. And we're going to trace the edge of the slate onto the bottom side of the cloth. So ride your Sharpie right alongside the slate. 
pull the cloth a little bit taut and just follow your edge all the way down. And then we're going to move our stuff out of the way. We're going to move our stuff further back. And then we're going to roll that edge. We're going to fold that edge back. And you can see there's our Sharpie mark that tells us where the edge of the table is. That's going to be a reference for where we're going to, where we're going to spray our glue. Now the cloth stretches as you're going to put it down. It sh uh, when you go to pull that cloth, it stretches. So what I like to do is I'll go about an inch and a half further down from that mark and I'll put about a four inch wide, uh, spray the glue about four inches wide. Depending on what the humidity levels are in the room that you're working in, uh, the cloth may stretch more, it may stretch less, and I find that if you come about a, an inch and a half down from that mark uh, and, do, and spray about a four inch wide uh, fan of glue, four inch wide strip of glue across there, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going you're gonna to put glue to glue when, when you fold the cloth back over, once you go to stretch that cloth. Now, when we're spraying our glue on our edges of the slate, uh, you want to spray like you're like you're trying to hit the the corner, and you'll end up catching both the side of the slate and the top of the slate all at once. And again, you're going to you go about three passes, three quick passes, forward, backward, forward, move forward, forward, backward, forward, move a little further forward, forward, backward, and and you end up catching the whole thing and you get about three coats of glue. Now this stuff does not take long to set up. We're gonna stretch pretty good. And again, this is all but done by feel. And it's, it sets up so hard that I'll actually, I use my, my boards there to try to keep the slate from pulling, it, cause it'll slide on you. You're pulling hard enough that, that you could slide that, that slate over. And again, same thing with the other side. You're gonna press, seat that glue together. Work it down on the sides. Now I've seen a lot of, a lot of uh, guys that like to tuck the cloth up underneath the table. I don't really like doing that. It's not necessary. It's a waste of cloth. Uh, it's a waste of glue. It's a waste of effort. Um, you know, the, the simplest, you know, you, you really don't need to overcomplicate things. And the simplest way of doing things is oftentimes the best way of doing things. So just go to the edge of the, the, the bottom edge and then cut off your cloth. Just follow that bottom edge. Use, use the bottom edge of the slate as a guide and run your razor down and cut the cloth off even with the bottom of the, of the slate. And we're going to cut it, cut it straight off, straight row back. Again, pick up your cut on the other end where you started and go back to the other direction. And once you get to the end of your cut there at the pocket, you can rip it. You can rip the cloth straight off. It will rip in a, in a straight line. Now for your ends, you do exactly like you did for that, that previous side. You're gonna mark where the edge of your slate is, mark where your pocket is. And roll back the cloth, fold it back. We'll do the other end as well. And your marks don't have to be incredibly precise. I mean, you know, you just need to know where the end of the slate is. So 
So you fold back your cloth there. And then we're gonna ro go, go back over to the opposite side and we'll do our glue. Grab our cardboard and our glue. And I said before, you always wanna test your, uh, your, your glue on the cardboard and this is why. Sometimes that glue will start to set up on the nozzle and you'll end up with strings of glue that go all haywire. It could get on the center of your cloth. Now I knew it wouldn't do it where I was on, on this particular section of the table because I had folded the cloth back. You know, there was, there was a lot of excess there that was protecting the, the main body of the, of the uh, bed cloth, but it could shoot in some weird direction and spray cloth, spray glue all over your cloth. If it does that, it's no big deal. Don't immediately jump in and try to get the glue off. Just leave it sit on the top of the cloth. Walk away from it for about 20 minutes, okay? Do something else on the table. Well, real quick, uh, if you notice, I actually pull the cloth back a little bit and I do a, a, a uh, an arched pattern on the cloth. That's because the center of the cloth will stretch a little bit more than the ends will. As we get to the sides of the table, it doesn't stretch quite as much, but I still wanna make sure I have glue contact. So I do in a little bit of a, of a bow. Now again, if you, if you get glue on the, if you happen to get some spray glue on the center of the cloth, leave it set for about 20 minutes, don't touch it. Leave it alone and let that glue completely dry and then come back with a little bit of duct tape and just lay the sticky side of the duct tape down on top of the glue and lightly, very, very, very lightly pass your finger over the duct tape where the glue is and then pull away. The glue should come come clean off of the table. Don't, don't ever just try to immediately get in there and uh, pull glue off of a, a, you know, fresh glue that just landed there because all you'll do is push that glue into the fabric and you'll never get it out. But if you just leave it set on top of the cloth, it's just laying on the, on the very tips of the fibers. And once it sets up, it won't migrate into the cloth. Uh, it's a little bit firmer and, you know, it's, it, it will stick to the duct tape, but it won't stick to the cloth at that point and you can just peel it right, right away. So again, we're, we'll do our ends and, and pull the cloth nice and tight, just like we did our sides. Again, rubbing the cloth down, and then we take our razor and cut right at the very bottom, using the bottom of the slate as our guide. And then you can simply rip off the, the excess. Now we'll come in for our, for our pockets. Go right in the center, go about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the, the pocket and cut a single slit for all of your corner pockets. And then right at the, at the, the end of the pocket, uh, at the edge of the table, all you need to do is cut a couple of tabs. Those tabs are gonna fold under right there, that, that what I just cut, those little tabs, that's gonna fold underneath the cloth. On your side pockets, you're gonna cut three. You're gonna go a quarter of an inch from the edge of the slate right in the center, in the, in the center of the pocket, cut a slit down, half the distance between that slit and the, in, the uh, end of the pocket, cut another slit about a quarter of an inch from the top of the, the slate, from the edge of the slate, and then repeat on the opposite side, cut your tabs, your little fold under tabs. So you do it just like this for your side pockets and then cut your little tabs on the side, cut your little tab on the side. And again, this is this might be one of those things you might wanna watch a couple of times. And for your, your corner pockets, just a single cut 
right in the center, and then your little fold under tabs. Now this is why I use four by fours is because it allows me to do that right there. Slide the, the slate over so I can get to the underside of it. Now I'm gonna take, at this point, I'm gonna take a, uh, another piece of cardboard and I'm gonna bend it, make multiple bends in it. And this allows it to conform to the shape of the pocket. Now, once I do that, I'm going to put a couple of passes of, of glue and let it dry. Let it get tacky, not dry, but tacky. And what that allows us to do is when we put the, the cardboard up, we're going to stick those uh, release cuts, uh, those, those fingers. Let's, let's uh, stick it to the cardboard so that we can glue just the underside. And then we're going to we're going to glue the underside of the slate as well. And this is again where that that uh, 3M high strength 90 comes in handy because it's very accurate. You don't have to worry about getting a cloud of of glue that wafts up and settles on the on the table. And again, we'll do the same thing with our side pockets. Except this time, instead of having two tabs to, to fold under, we have four. Instead of two larger ones, we have four smaller ones. No big deal. And David's going to walk around the table so you guys can get an even better look at what it is I'm doing. So we'll spray the tabs, spray a little bit of the... the side of the slate right there in the pocket and then we'll spray the underside of the table now about the time that you get done with that third pocket it's time to start gluing up or start pressing down your 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 pockets uh you do three at a time and by the time you're done with the by the time you're done uh putting the spray glue on the the last of the three pockets it's time to start putting, you know, laying down the, uh, the tabs and everything and cleaning up the, the pockets on the slate. And before you ask what happened to David's fingers, well, he lost them in the divorce along with his sense of humor. And he's pressing pretty firmly here. So we'll show you on these three. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna bother showing you the, uh, the other side uh, because it's, it's the exact same process, just three more times. I think I was pretty thorough in showing you exactly how to do this. All right, so now that all of our pockets are done on the one side, uh, we'll go ahead, we'll push it over. And like I said, I'm not gonna bother showing us doing the other side, but again, this is the whole reason for using the four by fours. I have the underside of them lined with, with pool table cloth so that they don't mar up or scratch up the, uh, the top of the rails. Customer wants to go in and take a look at the inside of the pool table, but and uh, you know that's fine. I don't mind. He wants to see if there's anything, any goodies that his customers have uh, have lost inside of the pool table. And you know it's it's strange. I've actually uh, I have found money inside of coin-operated tables and bars. I have found condoms. I have uh, I actually got called out one time. I got a service call at like 3 a.m. to go to a bar. 
uh, the police wanted me to open up the pool table. Apparently they had done a raid on uh, one of the locations and uh, I was just a service tech. I didn't, the table didn't belong to me, but anyway, the, the table belonged to the amusement company that I worked for. And uh, the police had apparently done a raid on the place and saw somebody throw something inside one of the pockets of the pool table and they couldn't get to it. So they called me out and they said, well, we need you to, uh, to open up the, the pool table. So I opened up the coin side of it and they said, no, we need you to take the slate off of it. So uh, I, I you know, go through taking the, taking the trim pieces off, taking the rails off, had one of the cops give me a hand lifting the slate. And sure enough, inside one of the, uh, the tracks there, the gullies, uh, there was a bag of crack. Somebody had, they had thrown a bag of crack cocaine inside the, uh, the pool table to, to avoid getting caught. Uh, it didn't work. They still got caught. But uh, anyway, find lots of interesting things inside of pool tables. All right, so the bed cloth is pretty much done. David went around, while I was telling you that story, David actually went around with duct tape uh, at the edge and folded that underneath the, uh, uh, the, uh, underneath the slate. Uh, I find that that's much less expensive and it does every bit as good a job uh, as anything. And it's a little extra security uh, in case that glue were to ever fail, uh, the, the, the duct tape just adds a little extra security to prevent the glue from failing. So we line up the slate, uh, pull out one side, pull out the opposite side, the boards, lower the slate down, may have to wiggle it a little bit to get it, uh, get it in place. And then we'll lay our rails back out where they go. Lay them out all in, in place. We'll put in our rail bolts. Now it's really important here, when you go to put your rail bolts back in, do not tighten them down until you have all three or all five in some cases rail bolts uh, started. Now I use a, uh, a string line here to find where, uh, where I'm gonna put the, the spot. And while I'm doing that, David is busy putting the, uh, the trim pieces back on. And I just use, like I said, a string line, some duct tape, and that's pretty much it. Table's done. You know, I think that brown, uh, I've never done a table in brown before, but I think, uh, I think that brown really did come out nice. All right, there we go. That's all there is to recovering a coin operated pool table. So if you have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate, leave some comments down below, ask me questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, I got my customer over here. I don't think he wants to be in, in frames, do you? Yes. <laughs> Getting a wonderful job. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. All right. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Y'all take care.